Uh, yes, I can. I can see you. I can. Yeah, we can start. Yes, um, if you don't mind, it's going to be it's recorded. Uh, it's going to be recorded. So that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Mark. Mark Felix. I'm calling from Punch headquarters. Hello, yeah. Mark. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Uh, and congratulations on the Reno Nuggets. You saw pictures on online. And um, the free Lias tribal movement. Uh, oh, thank you. As you can see, I'm actually wearing the official um, jacket, the tracksuit. So that's Reynolds Nugget on top, and then, um, well, I think it's over here, sorry. Reynolds Nugget on yeah, top, yeah, yeah. free Lias tribal. Yeah, it's a good, good, good one. So um, let me just get right into it. So according to your tweet, uh, the tweet you posted on, on Twitter, and I quote, uh, is it a coincidence that Buhari lost the presidential elections in Aso, Aso Rock, polling unit, and the FCT? And a month later, he orders Aso Rock um, Clinic not to treat Nigerian residents there. I don't think so. Uh, the Buhari I know is vindictive and petty enough to do so. Uh, Mr. Reno, that's, that's quite a direct uh, claim, uh, you know, accusation, you know. Uh, do, do you have any facts to this or any anecdotes that you have to share to, to, to back this up? Well, what facts do I need? It was reported in the media. I mean, uh, uh, the, all the media reported it. I think even Punch even reported it. Um, I do certainly it was reported in uh, Vanguard and this day um, that um, I think Premium Times broke the story. And the story has not been denied by the uh, presidency. Uh, what the story says is that the president has given orders to Asurok uh, Clinic uh, to treat only the family, the first family, that's his family, and the second family, yeah. that's the family of the vice president. And so I know President Muhammad Buhari to be a very vindictive and petty man. I'm not like the average Nigerian that maybe I'm as afraid of arrest or I'm afraid that I won't get a political appointment. I have everything that I need on earth. I'm ready to die today or to live up to 100. So I can say the truth and damn all consequences. The man is a vindictive man. On the day of the presidential elections, we saw how petty he was that he peeped to check if his own wife, Aisha Buhari, voted for him. So a man that can do that, how do you think is it going to be a coincidence that a month after that election, where he lost the election at the Asura polling unit, which is a fact, and then he lost the election at the FCT, then he comes around and gives such an order. The man is vindictive and the man is petty, and we know that for a fact. So I'm drawing uh, from circumstantial evidence to, to show yeah. that he's actually doing that in reaction, in response to what happened in the, at the elections at Asura polling unit and the Federal Capital Territory. Okay, so uh, this, this, this has nothing to do with some people speculating that is because uh, you know PDP did not win the elections. That's why you you are bringing this to the forefront and you're hammering on the whole vindictive and petty thing. I mean, this is not coming from any place of uh, anger. I would say, uh, you know, that PDP did not win the election in any way. How can it come from a place of anger? I'm a number one best-selling author, not in Nigeria, internationally. My book was number one. I made a lot of money for my book. I'm quite comfortable. I live in my own houses. I've got um, multiple houses that I built and I bought with hard-earned money. I didn't make money from government when I was in government. I lost money from being in government. Right now, I am in a place in my life where I'm very satisfied. If the PDP had won, I wasn't going to leave my business in the United States and then come back to Nigeria. No. So, I mean, that is completely out of the picture. I'm an opposition politician, yes. And so that means that I strive to make my country better by pointing out things that are wrong and then speaking the truth to power. Not only do I do that, if you and you talked about my Reynolds Nuggets, Mark, if you see yeah. that I also... I also give contributions, I give ideas, I give suggestions, you know, uh, a constructive criticism. But you're not going to say that I, I because um, the PDP lost, that's why I'm criticizing the government. When I was spokesman to President Jonathan, I criticized my boss. I criticized my boss. Um, he was in the media. You can Google it. And I criticized him to his face. When I was criticizing him, I remember the late Oronto Douglas, who was uh, a confidant of the president, was hitting me at the back and telling me to stop. Today... President Jonathan and myself are the closest friends. We're very, very close. So, I mean, like, that is rubbish. You know, I'm not a person that suffers fools gladly. That is just hogwash.
Okay. Um, well, it, it is no news as well that uh, the presidential candidate of PDP, Atiku, yeah, um, has gone to the election petition tribunal to contest the 2019 election. Um, do, you, do you think PDP has a chance of winning and upturning the 2019 elections? What, what, what chances do you think they have? Of course, PDP has a chance, uh, not a chance, uh, PDP has in all likelihood, if the judiciary is allowed to do their job without parents, PDP is going to win that case. Because obviously, they have the true results from the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, which, uh, uh, which the All Progressive Congress has accused them of hacking into INEX server. Now, look at that. That is an admission of guilt. Why will APC accuse them of hacking into a INEX server if they brought a fake result? If you hacked into an INEX server, that means that you got the real results. There's going to be a bombshell at the tribunal because you're going to see how the results, how they, the collision was done fraudulently. I'll give you a couple of examples. Okay. In 2015, we saw the results in Bornu states. Now, in 2019, Bornu states' results has increased by 82%. 82%. Okay. Now, the governor of Bonu said himself, four days before the presidential election, he went out to campaign and Boko Haram attacked his convoy, killed many people in his convoy. Premier's time said tens of people. We don't know the real amount of number of people. And then the okay. governor barely escaped with his life. That, that state is the most insecure place in the whole of the world. It is more insecure than Syria. ISIS has been defeated in Syria. There is no place on earth today that is more insecure than Borneo State. And that is the place where voter turnout increased by 82%. And then conversely, look at what happened in Aquaibom. Aquaibom is yeah. probably the most peaceful state in Nigeria, a very prosperous state. It is the wealthiest state in terms of um, uh, uh, federal allocation from the 13% derivation. And so yeah. in Aquaibom states, voter turnout, voters reduced by 62%. How does that happen? Are you trying to tell me that war and insecurity is conducive to voter turnout and then peace is not conducive to voter turnout? Muhammad Buhari and his cabal were stupid in their rigging. It was very unintelligent. They didn't even put effort into it because they are, all they just have is brutal force, no brain, just brawn. So the facts are going to be presented in a cool, calm, and collected manner. And Nigerians are going to see for themselves. Now, we know for a fact that the president um, knew what he was going to do. And that was why he fired the former CJ, uh, rather the um, suspended CJN, uh, Walter yeah. Onogen. You know, framed him up and look at the case. At the, their, their case is falling apart in, at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. And then he's yeah. put his lucky there. Uh, what's his name now? Um, uh, Tanko. Um, yeah. Muhammad Tanko, of which yeah. look, uh, we have done our investigation. If this, anyway, let me not, uh, uh, um, I don't want to uh, let the cat out of the uh, uh, bag. About. At the appropriate time, we will be talking. But if there is freedom given to the judiciary. Now, lastly, on the final note, after the scheduling and suspension of the election in Rivers, you know, we finally got. A, a winner, a winner emerged. Uh, what, what, what's your, what's your reaction to the elections in reverse? Very quickly. I celebrated the defeat of the forces of fascism and dictatorship. Rotimi Amechi is a useless man, an anti-democrat, a lackey, a traitor. Look at him. What has he achieved in life? Everything that he got, he was given by other people. He was a PA to Peter Odili, the former governor. At a time when Peter Obi went to meet uh, um, Odili, when Odili yeah. was uh, um, uh, um, uh, deputy governor, this was all yeah, during the Babangida era, Peter, yeah. uh, Peter Odili introduced Amechi to him as his PA. And uh, uh, Odili arranged it. But he got there, he bit the finger that fed him, a complete parasite. And then he was there. Obasanjo just saw what he was, and Obasanjo um, uh, um, uh, turned the PDP against him. That's why he wasn't uh, allowed to come in. He had to go to court, and the court brought him in. The first time that had happened in Nigeria. Now, a man who has been so unfortunate, you would expect that this man will have love for his people. But look at what the man went there and, and did. I'm not going to be afraid. If, they, if I'm lying, let him take me to court, and I will expose him to court. The man is a useless man, a shameless man, a traitor, a man that has no sense of self-esteem. Look at the Maritime University at Okonekoko in the South South. He, he said that he was going to stop that project. And then he went to Buhari's uh, hometown of Dara to build a transport university in a place that is more or less a desert. What kind of man is that? I'm so glad that 
governor, we can won that election. And I believe that this is the beginning of the political death of that useless traitor, Rotimi Amechi.